hands-on look at 50 features and changes from watchOS 4. When you first pair your Apple Watch with your iPhone, you're going to notice a new pairing UI. Now this pairing UI takes some obvious visual cues from W1 chip enabled devices like the AirPods, as you can see right here. So when you tap the pair button, you're going to be taken to the pairing section of the Apple Watch app. Now, as anyone who owns an Apple Watch will tell you, the initial pairing process takes quite a while and Apple this time around has decided to add some usefulness to the pairing process, actually providing users with tips on how to use their Apple Watch. So you get tips on how to use the digital crown, how to use the side button, and how to navigate around using touch gestures on the screen. Now you're also going to notice an updated passcode interface and this interface has been updated to contain larger tap targets. So each of the passcode buttons, the numbers one through nine, including zero of course, have been updated to be larger and easier to tap on. You also have a new red color delete button just in case you make a mistake. Now you'll notice that when you touch on these buttons, the animation is different from that of watchOS 3. The animation here is much more pronounced in watchOS 4, so you're sure that you actually press the button. And to add to that, there's also a new click sound. You hear that? Pretty cool. In watchOS 4, the dock received a new vertically scrolling interface. So when you invoke the dock, you can use the digital crown to scroll vertically throughout the dock's contents. Of course, you can use your finger as well. You also have the option of ordering by favorites or selecting recently used apps. And if you scroll to the very bottom of the dock, you're going to see an all apps option. And what that does is it basically takes you to your full list of apps in the grid view, just like this. Now, Apple has come to realize that not everyone likes the grid view. So in watchOS 4, if you force press on the screen like this, you can select a new list view. Yes, a list view instead of a grid view. So let's tap list view and you can see a full list of all of your apps in alphabetical order. So you can just scroll through like this. And the list view outright replaces the grid view. You can of course use your finger to scroll through as well. And this may make it easier for you to find the particular app that you're looking for. I especially think this will be helpful for first time Apple Watch users. Of course you can tap on the app you wish to switch to just like that. And if you navigate all the way back to your watch face, and then you press the digital crown again, it's gonna take you, instead of the grid view, it takes you to the list view, just as you would expect. Of course, you can switch back to grid view if you want to. Eagle-eyed watchOS users will notice slightly bolder text for notifications. One of the big features in watchOS 4 is the new kaleidoscope watch face that can be controlled using the digital crown. You can actually spin it like this to get some of those crazy kaleidoscope effects at any time right there from the convenience of your watch face. You can also make your own kaleidoscope faces right from the watch app on your iPhone. And you can also go into the photos app, select a photo that you want to base your kaleidoscope on and then tap create watch face. This is going to take you over to the watch app and use the photo that you selected as a base for your kaleidoscope. That is really cool. So you see the styles below, you can choose facet or radial and customize to your liking. Another big feature is the addition of the new Siri watch face in watchOS 4. Now this watch face includes proactive cards that provide you with data throughout the day that provides customized, relevant information that applies to you personally. So for instance, you'll get details on the local weather. You'll also get information about your upcoming appointments. And there's a handy Siri button right there on the watch face. So you can ask Siri whatever you need. And in watchOS 4, you can now switch between watch faces while in edit mode by using the digital crown like this. You can just scroll through all the available watch faces. And then when you find the one you want, just tap on it. And although they aren't included in beta one, users can look forward to Toy Story inspired watch faces. You can also look forward to person to person payments courtesy of Apple Pay right from your Apple Watch. So you can ask Siri to send money to friends instantly and securely. And you can also request money as well. You'll notice a new handy install button next to the apps that feature Apple Watch versions. And here's something really cool. In watchOS 4, there's a new keypad option in the phone app. So now you can dial numbers directly from your Apple Watch. You no longer have to just rely on your contacts or using Siri. Now you can use that handy keypad to insert numbers directly right from the convenience of your Apple Watch. So making a call right now. And while we're at it, why not just mention the new call interface in the phone app? It's slightly modified. And of course it includes a handy link back to that new keypad that's found in the phone app.
The Maps app has been slightly redesigned with a new scrolling list of suggestions and recent tiles for easy navigation. And if you head over to the Settings app and go under General, you're gonna find a new Locations Preference panel because even if your watch doesn't have GPS natively, it can rely on the radios in your phone. Now here's a small but handy detail. There's a new repeat button in the timer app. So when you start a timer and it finishes, you're gonna see timer done. Now you can repeat that timer with the simple press of a button. The music app got a visual upgrade. Now you have that vertically scrolling interface. You can use the digital crown to scroll through all of your albums and playlists, just like that. And there's also automatic playlist syncing, including Apple recommended music. So you'll see things like your new music mix and your favorite mix. And that's not all. You'll also notice an updated now playing complication that you can add to your favorite watch face. Of course, you can still tap that to open up the now playing interface, which is slightly modified as well. Now there's an actual indicator as to where your music originates in the upper left hand corner. Now here's a really big feature in my opinion. You can now easily add individual albums and artists to your Apple Watch. So of course you see your automatic stuff, the heavy rotation playlist and all that that we just talked about. And then you hear you see a list of your playlists and albums. But here's the important thing, the add music button right at the bottom, you just tap that now, you can search all of your music. You can go into a particular album, find the album that you want and add just that one album to your Apple Watch. So I could just find the one I want, tap on it, just like that. Now it's added, you can see it right there. That is really awesome. And not just that, you can now add multiple playlists to your Apple Watch. You can go in, tap on the playlist, find the playlist you wanna add, and then add that playlist to your Apple Watch. So this is really, really nice. It's an especially welcome addition for those of us who have been frustrated when trying to add music to the Apple Watch. And here's another cool music related feature. You can now access playback controls right from within the workout app. In watchOS 4, the camera remote becomes a lot more capable. It can now work with portrait mode. It can work with video modes, such as time-lapse or slow motion even. It's much more capable in watchOS 4. I think you guys are gonna like this a lot. There's a new app in watchOS 4, and that is none other than the News app. The News app provides you with little tiny snippets of news that you can save for later. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see a save for later button, and you can view the full article on your iPhone. And of course, there's a news app complication, so you can get those little snippets of news and even more bite-sized snippets right there on your favorite watch face. And if you tap that, it opens up the news app to the article. Now there's a new flashlight in Control Center. And to be honest, I didn't think this would be very handy, but I actually tried it out in the dark and it works surprisingly well. So you get this little flashlight, it actually gets brighter when it's turned away from you like that. And when you turn it towards yourself, it gets dimmer, which makes sense, right? Brighter dimmer, but it doesn't stop there. There's also a night workout light that flashes. So if you're running down the street in the dark and you want to stay visible, this can help you out. You're going to be seen when you have this on. And lastly, there is another light. It's an, I guess an emergency light and it's just a red light. Now when your watch is using location services, either from the built-in radios in the watch itself or from your paired iPhone, you'll see a new location icon in control center. Fitness fans will likely appreciate the new streamlined workout app. It's bigger tap targets, easier to use, easier to navigate in my opinion. And not just that, but it also allows you to start workouts with a single tap. When you're in the mood to go, when you're in the mood to run, you just wanna get down to it. You don't wanna have to go through configuring anything. This allows you to get right down to business immediately. You'll notice a new workout type animation in the upper left hand corner. So the little running guy right there for my running workout. There's also a new quick switch back-to-back -back workout feature for those of you that want to keep going. All you need to do is swipe right and then tap the new button and select your new workout. And then you can select a brand new workout right after your prior workout. And in watchOS 4, there's a new high intensity interval training workout that you can select. So you just tap that and you can get going. And you're gonna need some music to go along with those workouts. So you'll appreciate the ability to automatically start a playlist whenever you start a workout that is new in watchOS 4. There's also enhanced swim tracking in watchOS 4, so it automatically tracks sets and rest, pace for each set and distance. And coming later this year, you can now sync your Apple Watch to support it gym equipment to keep important metrics in sync. Another new feature, VO2 max data logging from your Apple Watch directly to the health app. And a new workout preference panel found in the general section of the settings app. And these are all settings that you'll also find on the paired iPhone inside the watch app. 
And that includes the new Express Connect feature. This is the feature that will allow you to connect to gym equipment in the future via NFC. The activity app through regular notifications now seeks to push you further. Daily inspiration, evening push, a monthly challenge. These are all things you'll find in the activity app. And there are also new celebrations when you close a ring or you hit a milestone. Here's a subtle feature that I appreciate it. When you play music on your iPhone, you're gonna notice that the now playing interface is auto displayed on your Apple Watch, just like that. You'll also notice that the heart rate app includes a chart of the last 24 hours of data. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at 50 new features on the Apple Watch. Of course, that's not all of the features. There are other features that we haven't mentioned here. We'll talk more about those in upcoming videos and posts on 9to5Mac. What do you think about watchOS 4? Let me know in the comments. This is Jeff. 9 to 5 Mac.